On the road, a female leader was sitting in a very luxurious car. Suddenly, some shots were fired at the car, causing the bulletproof glass to break. The bodyguard Max immediately motioned the female leader in the rear seat to bend down and told the driver to move swiftly. Suddenly, the driver was shot in the head. The bodyguard Max took the wheel right away. Unexpectedly, the car collided with another car parked on the side of the road. Max observed through the car window and realized that the sniper's skill level was not ordinary. The sniper fired through the bulletproof glass. Max told the female leader absolutely not to get up. Although bullets could penetrate car glasses, they couldn't pass through the car's bulletproof steel plate. Then they contacted the headquarters for support. Simultaneously, Max observed the bodyguard car behind them in the mirror to inform them that they were waiting for help. Then he told the female leader that the aid team would arrive within two minutes in order to soothe her panic. At this time, the sniper was still firing repeatedly at the car. This increased the fear and insecurity of female leader. A person who had never been to a battlefield saw this scenario would become terrified. Max kept calming her down by telling her to hide in the bulletproof steel plate of the car and she would be safe in this time. After then, he quickly got out of the car on the opposite side and used his mobile phone to take a snapshot of the sniper's position and reported to the commander that the sniper was on the Pasco building's roof. However, when he inquired when the aid team would arrive, the person on the other end of the line said it would take two minutes. Max became enraged. He had to discreetly take the driver out and then control the car to move. While backing the car up, he asked the female leader not to get up. A bulletproof could prevent the bullet. The sniper still fired, but he could only strike the front window glass. Then the car turned 360 degrees and dashed to the Pasco building's blind spot. He brought a gun and stormed into the building after ensuring that it was safe. Max pretended to be a police officer in order to evacuate the crowd. The bald security quickly swiped his card to open the door and led Max to the terrace. Max looked around carefully. Suddenly, he saw a cleaner carrying along something. When he got closer, he realized that this was an old comrade of him. This man only told that someone had to stop her. After saying that, he committed suicide. Max could only roar because there was no time for him to stop that man. It appeared that his heart was in pain. After that, the bulletproof police cars arrived just in time and escorted the female leader to a safe place. This assassination attempt failed. A suspicious truck carrying a bomb was speeding wildly toward a primary school. The police tracked it, and they were trying to figure out how to stop it. However, it was thrust to the roadside. Seeing the truck about to rush into the primary school, the teachers yelled and told the students to flee into the classroom to hide. At this moment, the bulletproof police car reinforcing nearby also arrived. He raised the gun and fired at the truck. The suspected driver was fatally shot on the spot. The truck quickly lost control and collided with cars parked on the side of the road. Armed and plainclothes police officers swiftly encircled the truck. But the detonator could not be found. However, when the police officers attempted to approach the truck in search of the detonator, the suspect who was still alive suddenly detonated the bomb. The heroic police officers died on the scene. They devoted their lives to safeguard the children. The female leader was stunned when she heard the news and immediately commanded an investigation into the incident. Then she went to a university to read the keynote address. However, in the middle of the speech, the secretary had brought a briefcase and was getting ready to enter. Max instantly stopped him at the entrance and requested to check the briefcase. But no suspicious objects were found. When the secretary was going on the platform, a woman ran to it. The bodyguard Max felt something was wrong and immediately rushed to the platform in an attempt to save the female leader. But it was too late. All of the injured were transferred to the hospital in a timely manner. Max was barely mildly hurt. The female leader was gravely hurt and passed away. Max was deeply remorseful about the female leader. He was about to commit suicide when he realized that this gun ran out of bullet. His ex-wife had a feeling something bad was about to happen to him. Therefore, she quickly found Max and consoled him. And thanks to the hugs and warmth of his children, he finally was free of self-blame and grief. He decided to restore his sanity and find out who murdered the female leader. After investigating, the police discovered that the briefcase was not the source of the explosion. It was due to the secretary stepping up to the platform. The weight of both of them exploded the bomb under the platform. Max attracted suspect Luke by selling sniper guns. But unexpectedly, he was struck down by the other. This man on the street was actually a police officer. However, when he discarded the pieces of cloth that had been wrapped around him, his body was tied up with bombs. When the switch was flipped, it immediately exploded. He constantly explained to everyone that he was harmed. The police encircled him instantly and cleared the surrounding crowd. After that, the man was sent to a different location. 
The field commander reported the incident to command. And command said that he may be shot at any time. Command requested to supervise him carefully. At this time, Max's superiors dispatched the black girl to negotiate by the walkie-talkie. Max explained over the walkie-talkie to his superiors that he was knocked unconscious last night. When he awoke, he was bound with a bomb. His finger was stuck to the switch. However, his superiors not only doubted him, but also purposefully accused him of the death of the female leader. And then they walked away. Max pleaded with the black girl to find bomb disposal experts to help him defuse the bomb first. However, command allowed shooting Max. Max hopelessly explained to everyone that he was concealing evidence to investigate who was behind the killing of the female leader. These men were watching the scene through a surveillance camera, and they were also concerned that Max would discover the proof against them. After that, Max reported to the police that he placed important documents, which the female leader had hidden in the lamp in the downstairs bathroom of the apartment. After hearing that, the man instantly dispatched a blonde man to steal documents. Unexpectedly, shortly after the lampshade was opened, a significant volume of sulfuric acid erupted. The blonde man immediately got caustic by acid and caught by the police. However, when bomb disposal experts examined the bomb, they recognized that the bomb's construction was rather complex. During demolition, it could be detonated. The Minister of Interrorism chose to stop dealing with it and commanded everyone to start leaving. Max was the only one who stayed hopelessly. When Max's wife witnessed it, she definitely ran to him. She believed that Max was not guilty. He could demonstrate his innocence. Headquarters commanded to halt the shooting. Max also led the police to his home to look for the important documents. With the remote guidance of bomb depot sal experts, the detonator was successfully deactivated. Then Max took the opportunity to flee. He knew clearly that if he wanted to prove his innocence, he had to personally apprehend the perpetrator who harmed him. Max used the cover of darkness to surreptitiously spy on Luke, who kidnapped and harmed him. Obviously, he found out. It turned out that the person who had harmed him was none other than his superiors. Max ran over when he saw this scene. He knocked the security guard unconscious and grabbed the handgun and pointed it at Luke. Luke tried to resist and was shot. Thus, he held his head and knelt on the ground. Max asked Luke if he assassinated the female leader. At the same time, a woman upstairs was taking her cell phone to record what was going on at the moment. Luke replied that it was for business. In the end, both the female superior and Luke were apprehended and questioned by police. It turned out that the female superior had accepted a bribe to secretly abet terrorists in murders and terrorist activities and planned to accuse all offense on the bodyguard Max of the female leader. It's really difficult to beware of house robbers, not only harming others but also harming oneself. In the end, the law harshly punished them.